Football policing is not for the faint of heart. While one week fixtures for Derby and Chesterfield might go without a hitch, the next can be a completely different story. And with football-related violence and disorder on the rise nationally, it's a challenge that officers have to be ready to adapt to. The Home Office tell us is that, you know, over a 70% increase in disorder at football matches this season alone. The stats say year on year, all the um, football violence, incidents, pyros, pitch incursions, football-related disorder was on a massive downtrend, so it was in a really good place. I think it's just a, a little bit people have probably forgot how to behave, or the fact they've been locked up for two years. You had fans that were probably went to the match with the parents or weren't allowed to go to the game, certainly on their own. They're two years older now, so they kind of missed out on a lot of things. They suddenly got this newfound freedom. There's uh, a national shortage of stewards, believe it or not. People that were reliant on the, the entertainment event industry, football being part of it, during COVID, they had to find new jobs. They're compelled to, there's no sporting events, no crowds, they've got to find new jobs. All these little ingredients put into the recipe um, is why we've seen um, an increase in, in football related disorder this season. I mean, I've seen this year, with my own eyes, more officers injured, assaulted at, at games that I've worked around the country than probably accumulated in the last 12, 10 or 12 years. The primary job of the police at football games across Derbyshire is to make sure those who choose to attend can do so safely. Part of that effort is months in the planning, as the team work out which fixtures potentially present the most risk and then plan accordingly. The planning process that we have for, 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 for all the clubs that we administer is, is extensive and it starts in June when the fixtures are released. The fixture gods have been really kind to me at Chesterfield. I didn't have any of my high category games until Notts County and Wrexham. They were both Tuesday nights, which, because it's a Tuesday night game, lessens the impact a little bit. We go through a speculative assessment of what we think the category games are going to be. So you've got you've got different categories. You've got police free, which we don't do at Chesterfield and Derby. That would mean there'd be no officers at all at the game in any capacity. Um, OFO only, spotters only. Then you've got low, medium, high. Nearly every fixture that we've had to this year um, has gone up at least one, one, one level. Some higher category fixtures have even come as something of a surprise. Derby's home game against Coventry last season proved challenging, while Chesterfield have also struck up a tense rivalry with a team from many miles away. I think historically, certainly with Grimsby, it's always been classed as a, as a, a local derby, even though it's an hour and a half away, 70 miles away, or whatever. We went there on 11th of December and um, a lot of Chesterfield uh, known supporters, certainly uh, to myself through doing my role, sort of went early and, and got on the beer and found themselves fighting each other come 11 o'clock in the morning and found themselves dispersed on a, on a train um, the way before kickoff. Obviously when them kind of scenes trigger off, sort of Grimsby supporters then got involved and then it's that old rival where police get him, you know, separate him in between the lines. Um, things with football fans, the little things like that stay in the memory. That, you know, they'll probably have been to 20 games, but they remember things like that. So we can see it brewing up. First, we'll end up with a bit of shouting from both sides, um, and then we'll call it dancing on the tiptoes because they start doing a bit of a dance. Um, like it's brewing up ready, so we can see it coming, and then we'll just try and split them up. Um, they'll try to aim back at each other, but you can just do what you have to do. At the end of the day, you're still a police officer, so. A lot of the preparation also revolves around certain fans. While the vast majority of supporters are well behaved, there are a small percentage at both Chesterfield and Derby whose actions threaten to ruin it for others. Like the fixtures, those risk fans are categorised in a similar way, low, medium and high. Uh, a low risk fan will, will engage in things like antisocial behaviour, things like inappropriate chanting, setting off pyrotechnics and, and, and you know, generally being a, a nuisance. Medium risk, uh, again, is everything that a low risk does, but they will be influenced by alcohol or drugs. And then we've got the high risk, who are the ones 
who will actively go to another city. They will maybe get in touch with a like-minded risk group from wherever they're playing. They will organise disorder. They will stay on the police radar. They won't engage with us. Um, no matter what we do, you know, we, we speak to these people and they'll blank us. They won't even talk to us. That's their prerogative. There's no law that says you've got to talk to PC Brown or the, or the Derby um, football policing team or Chesterfield or Adam Collins. Um, we will support non-risk. The more that we can support them, the more that it will be a toxic environment for the risk to, to, to operate, really. So we will support them in any way that we can. You know, and it's a family. Football is, is a, pleasingly, it's a family event and it should always be that way. It shouldn't be a domain for, um, for middle-aged men who have had a few beers to go and let some steam off on a Saturday. It's not. It's, it's a family event and it should be treated like that. Yet sometimes, despite months of careful preparation, things don't always go to plan. We've probably seen stuff they've not seen for a good, certainly the Derby Birmingham game, we've seen stuff inside that stadium they've not seen inside that stadium for 20 years since it's been built. With the Birmingham match, there was a number of um, home and away chairs uh, ripped out. As officers, we wouldn't go storming in to crowds of people. It's us against thousands of the fans, it's just not going to happen. We'll gather CCTV footage, body-worn video, anything that officers have, um, and we will deal with them robustly. It's just a case of gathering enough evidence and then prosecuting them. Um, why would we put ourselves, our families, other fans in danger um, when it can be dealt with? It's just a different way of dealing with football violence. Despite the actions of a small minority of fans, the Football Policing Unit still have their sights set firmly on making it a safe environment for the hundreds of thousands of people who want to enjoy it. It's Derby County to me, that's the area, that's my beat. And I work with them to, to try and make, make everything go smoothly. You know, we administered in, in the season before COVID, we administered as a force um, I think it was about 630,000 football fans who came through the turnstiles of the game, of the gates in, in of the grounds in Derbyshire. And you think that Chesterfield has got, uh, the whole of Chesterfield has got about 90,000 people. So, you know, if we're in perspective, it's a lot of fans and a lot of people that came to Derbyshire that season. That's just home games. Um, to do that, and the vast majority of them, and I know, went away um, actually pretty satisfied and felt, felt pretty safe. There is that mindset always at the back of my mind that there are families there, there are children there and they're just there to enjoy the game but they are seeing disorder and it, it's, not, it's not on at the end of the day. Um, it's not fair on the kids who are with the families and we need to keep them safe as well. So um, that's the most important really. And it's, it needs to be an enjoyable experience for families, everybody really who goes to a football match.